Some of you are about to enter into a world that's so different. Have you been through this building before? Not yet. I'm doing a little uh, gift shop. What were you expecting the first time you went down there after the rainstorm? I got a call early in the morning, uh, Thursday morning. We started Wednesday night, Thursday morning got a, got a call. And somebody said that there's five feet of water in the basement. Somebody else said that there's no water in the basement. And I, I was wondering what happened. And so I got over there and I realized at the bottom of the stairs, there's five feet of water in the basement. And this used to be all lit up everything down here and now it's been dumped five feet of water and around this way there should be all kinds of art in here and everything you can see what five feet of water does and i took a look at that and i just shook my head i, I just couldn't believe that, that you know 24 hours ago it was beautiful It took a long time to get a shop. I think Tom said five years and 14,000 hours to get that shop going and to get that far on the base of the clock with all reclaimed and recycled materials. And then in six hours, it's set back. I can't say it's eliminated, but it's set back. It's about the only thing that didn't float around in the basement. Water's up about this level right here. And uh, it basically dissolved a lot of stuff where I had all my photographs. This is all highly organized, as you had the last time on the tape, all organized. A lot of work to collect all this. I will come back. There is no doubt in my mind, I will come back. So anybody that's seen the clock, and there's been probably 3,000 plus people that have seen the clock, note what the situation is here, and note what it was when you came down here and saw my museum, and what it is now. So. As I walked in there and walked through it, I realized I gotta get the photographs out of here. So the very first thing, the number one priority is I knew where the photographs were at. Nobody else did. I knew where they were at. They were under the water on the floor in boxes. So I started getting them up here as fast as I could get them up into this room and peeling them apart and laying them out and just as fast as I could down and up and down and up to get the photographs out of there. And I think I, I went after, I had all the photographs labeled in, in envelopes as to what period of time they were in. Uh, going way back 30, 40, 50 years ago. And so I was able to look at the package and this has got to be saved. That's not going to be saved. This is more important. And finally, I got them all laid out up here. In one day, I had them all laid out. And I realized, I think I could save it. I got both of it right here. And, but a lot of the stuff is just not savable, but it's not that important with regard to the story of recycling. I, for some reason, I don't know if I was, if it was in my DNA, you know, but to see people throw things away that I saw potential that you could use, do something with it, throw it away, it's crazy. So taking orange crates and apple crates after I took that piano apart, and one thing led to another, then I made birdhouses out of the stuff that was going to be thrown away, and in 1952, 53, I'd sell, a, make a birdhouse, I'd paint it green or yellow and paint little flowers on it and sell it for a buck and a quarter. Man, I just made money off something somebody else threw away. So I started making little birdhouses, then little knickknacks. And at nine years, 10 years old, 11 years old, it started getting a little bit bigger and bigger. Finally, it went into recycled houses. And then I realized after looking at history and, and newspapers and magazines, how much go to the landfill? And then I, I've, I've witnessed and, and so many buildings, you know, 10 story buildings being bulldozed and all that beautiful trim and molding just gone. And I thought, what a waste.
That is the base of a 25 to 30 foot high clock right there. Can you guess what this is right here? Anybody guess what that is right there? Then look at that right there. You got me. Antique school desk from the 1880s, right there. This is an armrest from the Grand Theater downtown. Right here. Square nails from old buildings. My life history behind that panel. Antique meat slicer. Clark College. Are you people from Dubuque? Yes. Remember the Clark College in 1984? A lot of the Clark College is in this. This lintel right here, that's the Clark College lintel right there. That concrete piece right there. Now can you imagine what this is going to look like 25 to 30 feet high. Now this is an antique pool table leg right here. And I added a claw foot to it. And I took the screw that held it on the pool table and put it over there on the other side. That's an antique uh, table, or rather uh, from an antique uh, tub. This is uh, these drawers that pull out that uh, have all my irons and rock and stone and everything in there like that. And in the 60s and 70s, I used to build recycled houses. This is the story of that. And you see, when I did a project, I'd go to the lumber company and get nothing but nails. Everything else was recycled, and the lumber companies didn't like me. So they sent the state inspectors in on my project, and I was using solid oak 12 by 12s for my posts, and they said, you got to take them to the dump. They weren't green then, and you got to use stamp 4 by 4s with that are stamped. So I'll come up with my own stamp. It's your heritage we dismantle. Pure cane sugar, pure honey, pure waste. And so I start going from recycled houses into recycled small clocks. So I started building clocks, small clocks. The clocks are getting bigger. That right there, a close up of that with my high tech camera is right here. That's a knot. That's a knot. That's a square nail. I click knots. It's not good to send anything with. Right? And then when the gym did the gym upstairs, they uh, put a dumpster out back, eight feet wide, eight feet high, twenty feet long, and they had it out there for six months. They wondered why they every time they fill it up, it disappear. It all came down here. Put this whole shop together with what they threw out. And you would not believe what they this flood with people throwing out. I've gone, I have gone out and gotten brand new stuff out of the dumpsters, brand new, the pay in the packages, brand new stuff out of the dumpsters that they throw away. Oh, it gets a little wet, so they throw it away. Well, you know, it's, I shouldn't really say this, but the very first person that was my own dad. My mother saved everything. My dad uh, liked to throw everything out. There's a lot of people that just throw it out. What are you going to do with it? Throw it out. If they don't have an, the imagination as to what to do with it, throw it out. So my dad, I, I collected orange crates and apple crates for two years, and I had a miniature little lumber yard, and I wanted to take it to the new house that we're moving into, and he said, leave it. What are you going to do with it? You know. So my dad was the first one, but then it came uh, building inspectors and contractors and lumber yards and people that wanted to sell everything new. These people were against it, against it, against it. And then a lot of, most of the people are, throw it out, throw it out, whatever it is, throw it out. We don't have an idea as to what to do with it. Nobody else could possibly have an idea, so throw it out. So they throw it out on the curbing. We have a throwaway society, which is ridiculous. In 1952, my mother uh, had me take that piano apart and put it back together. Sixty years of gathering all of what I have, five years to put it together, 14,000 hours, and uh, one day, one rainstorm. told me to take that piano apart, it started right there. I took a screwdriver and I took my first screw out, you know, and I took that stuff apart, just started taking it apart, and I was in it then. She liked to play the piano, <laughs> and she wanted to take that piano with her. And so one thing led to another, and it just got bigger and bigger, and I just stuck with it. From this day forward, we're going to bring it back upstairs. It's 100% recycled. It's buildings from Dubuque, Galena, Platteville, Cedar Rapids, Clark College, now a university. Tom knows every piece and part in it, and he'll restore it because he's an expert at restoring as well as building. 